listen to a lot of music. I'm also a bit of an organizational freak, so I like to make dozens of specially made Spotify playlists to suit any mood I may be in, or to accompany any task I set out on. But while this functionality is really great for me, the appearance of a wall of random album covers mashed together leaves a little to be desired. So, to clean up the look of all my playlists, I set out on designing a set of clean, unique, and consistent playlist covers to keep track of my ever-growing music library. Today I'm going to take you through the process that I'm using to create these 3D covers, showing off the few that I've already established, and then I'll be going through and designing a brand new one for you right here. With that said, let's get started! Starting off, I'll go over exactly what I'm trying to design here, with a few examples of what I've already made and the general look and feel of what I want going forward. So for my Spotify playlist covers, I want to create a consistent set of objects representing the kind of music that's inside them. For my first batch of two covers, I made a stack of cassettes for my lo-fi playlist and a piano for, well, my piano music playlist. I also want them to be quickly readable by my eyes. The icon shape should quickly tell me the utility of the playlist that I'm looking at. Here I have a lightning bolt which represents my high energy music, you know, for working out or overwatch or something. In the second batch I made, I have an old computer monitor with a large terminal entry on the screen. My brain automatically reads this as my coding playlist. I'll note that my stylistic intentions have evolved after my first two covers, so the cover I'll be making today will be more in line with those in batch two. The other key part of keeping this readable to me is the use of color. These covers are usually only one or two main colors, and this makes them much quicker to parse in my head. Choosing the specific colors is also vitally important to me. I want the color to represent the mood or feeling of the music that's in the playlist. I have my lo-fi playlist as purple and pink for chill and cozy. My piano playlist is orange to convey warmth, and my high energy playlist switches out into a more energetic yellow as well as a hotter pink. And I just associate the color green with computer terminals and coding, so that was the default choice for my coding playlist. The cover I'll be making today will be for my 70s through 80s playlist. In my head, I identified that with a vintage turntable, something that should be easily simplified in the style that I'm going for. In this sketch, I wanted to get the general shape and features down, as well as figure out what color palette would work best for the cover. As for the colors themselves, I went for a combination of vibrant blues and electric purples. The truth is that the types of music in this playlist are all over the place, so I just wanted something that could cover all my bases. Anything from slow ballads to high energy pop music. And for the keen eyed of you out there, yes, the tone arm is on the wrong side in the sketch, but I assure you that it'll be correct in the final model. For this project, I'll be using a scene from an earlier cover to use as my base, quickly shoving the old computer monitor prop out of the way. Here I'm just using some primitive shapes, like cubes and cylinders, to block out the shapes and establish some proportions. Since these are simple pieces that I'm just using for renders, I'm not putting too much work into making clean topology. I don't mind using boolean modifiers or having different shapes intersect each other. As long as it gives me the intended final look, and it doesn't crash Blender, I have no problem doing it. Now even though this is still early on, I wanted to start dialing in the material gradients. Again using our sketch from earlier, I wanted those cool blues and energetic purples here. Keeping a good contrast between the foreground and background was also very important, and you'll see me messing with the shading of the sides here. The HDRI I'm using to light the scene does a lot of the heavy lifting for me lighting wise, but my intention with these pieces is to have a lot more stylized, illustrative look that doesn't play by all the rules of photorealism. You'll see this idea continue later on during post-processing, when many more of the aspects of the lighting will be tweaked. While I don't have a rigid guideline for how detailed these covers should be, my rule of thumb has been to make things as simple as possible while still being visually interesting and conveying the full extent of the objects they're representing. In the case of this turntable, that means having the main body, a platter slash record, and a simplified but decently accurate tone arm. I made sure to keep lots of references on hand to create something that looked at least mostly accurate and functional. I wanted to capture the overall shape and function of the tone arm without going way too into the weeds on the details of it. 
While it's fully featured with a cartridge and counterweight, you can see that even these are just represented by beveled primitives. The tone arm is quickly becoming the most detailed model I've done in one of these covers so far, but I'm making sure to not cross the line of making something too detailed. At this point, it's just a game of keeping things visually balanced. One tip I like to use is to break up a piece into different levels of complexity, and make sure that those levels are balanced well with each other. You could think of the body of the turntable as being low detail, the record as being medium detail, and the relatively small tone arm as being high detail. So far I think I'm doing a decent job of breaking it up, but you'll see me tweak it a little bit further as we go on. And finishing up the tone arm, I just created a simple standard base to attach it to the main body. Now going back to the idea of keeping things visually interesting, I was struggling with that a bit for the body of the player. While a simple box was accurate to many machines out there, including my own, it was just a bit too simple for my liking. I experimented with a few different insets and styles of breaking it up visually, but things either kept coming out too strange or too modern looking. I wanted this machine to represent a vintage turntable from the 70s and 80s after all, and making it too flat or too sleek would make it too out of place. It might also trick my monkey brain into thinking I was clicking on a club music playlist and instead finding myself greeted by Hall & Oates. I think the trickiest part about this one was just sticking to my goal about keeping it vintage looking. I actually loved how it looked with just the thin top, but it didn't fit the end use I had for this. What I ultimately decided on was a flat top section and a slightly tapered main body. I never found any turntable that looked like this in any of my references, but it felt like a good compromise to add some visual intrigue. Something I've gone back and forth on with these pieces is the use of drop shadows. Here and going forward, I decided to just keep them to a minimum and most likely take care of them in post. And finally, I was ready to render. You can see that I cranked up the exposure at the end, this just makes it easier to work with once I bring it over to Affinity Photo. It's easier for me to dial down the exposure afterwards than to try and add it in later. I should also note that I'm exporting this as an EXR file, so I don't have to worry about any blowout from the highlights. This was a tip I learned from Polyfjord, and honestly ever since working in this file format, I'll never go back to PNGs for renders. Lastly, I'm bringing our render into Affinity Photo to do some final post-processing. Now anything that you see me do here can also be done in Adobe Photoshop, but if you're like me and got tired of Adobe's pricing and subscription models, I highly recommend looking into Affinity and their products. This video isn't sponsored by any means, I'm just a big fan of Affinity's business model and their products. So there's three things I'll really be looking to accomplish during this step. One is color correction. If I don't like how any of the colors in the gradient turned out, especially in the background, this is where I'll fix that up. I also like to have my previous playlist covers on hand so I can make sure that I'm keeping the look between them consistent. Number two is selectively adjusting the exposure. I like to even things out here, bringing up the shadows and making things look a bit more evenly lit. I'm sure I can do this in Blender itself, but it's quick and easy for me to do it all just here. I also note that in no way am I a professional photo editor or 3D modeler. I just continue to learn the tools that I have and use the knowledge towards creating pieces that I want to make. My background of computer and art knowledge goes a long way here, but I am no blender or compositing expert. Now adding on to that, the third thing I found myself doing with these covers is adding artificial highlights. Yeah, even I find it a tad sacrilegious, but I can't ignore that it adds something really special to the final pieces. 
Also keep in mind that these things are going to be scaled down to just a thumbnail on your screen, so being pixel perfect isn't wholly necessary here. If you didn't see it in the YouTube thumbnail, I urge you to forget seeing any flaws you see this close. But now it looks like we can take a step back and take in the final playlist cover. Here we have the newest addition to the set, and I have to say I'm very happy with how this came out. Now if I could keep going and were to change a few things, a couple things that jump to mind are the background and the shading on the main body. I think I'll get rid of the teal band in the background and try to simplify it more and make the saturation more cohesive. The blue just pops a little too much for my taste when scaled down to a thumbnail. I also like to make that left side of the turntable darker, currently it just blends in with the right and I prefer more distinct separation there. But all in all, I'm so glad that you guys came along with me on this one. I would love to do more like these, maybe two or three per video going forward. But if you guys enjoyed, it would mean so much to me to let me know what you thought with a comment or by leaving a like, and subscribe if you like this sort of content going forward. I've got a few different types for the videos planned for this channel, and while not everything I put out is going to be making Spotify playlist covers, I do a lot of other artwork that I'd like to time lapse, as well as game development logs and maybe even live streams. So thanks again for watching, and stay tuned for more!